Peace. 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 Shalom. 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 Assalamu alaikum. And welcome to another day to labor in the vineyard of the Mosai. With your brother, another day to get in the almighty glorious word. And see what the most I got to serve. And what we eating on is better clarity. Better clarity of the Godhead. Which brings a better understanding of self and a better understanding of our position in the kingdom of the lower heavens. Alright? So let's see. Let's just get into it. Let's see. We're gonna start off in the keys. The keys of Enoch. The book of knowledge. We're going to start on page 361, key 303, verse 1. Beloved, I am calling your minds forward to the eternal presence. Beloved, I am calling your minds forward to the eternal presence. The Lord has sent his messengers of light. To reveal his angelic hierarchy. And I will have you remember. From the beginning of this cycle. From the beginning of this cycle. Down here in the sun universe. That the Lord God. Ordained angelic emissaries. Who are in accord with the office of his son. Alright pause. Let's get definitions. Let's, let's get some precepts. Alright? When it's talking about the office of his son, it's not talking about Jesus. Right, we got to help some more folks come out of idolatry to Jesus. Because the, the churches and the camps got a lot of people in idolatry. And you can't grow spiritually as long as you're in idolatry. Because you can't even follow what Jesus told you to do when you're in idolatry to Jesus. All right, and that, that stunts a lot of people grow. All right, let's get the definition of the office of the Christ. Because it speak when it say the angelic, because we remember the angelic emissaries, them whole light beings, they already on the other side of the veil. They not going to come, they not going to be in accordance with somebody that's of the office of the flesh. So they're not talking about Jesus in the flesh. It's speaking about the high consciousness. Office of the Christ, the redemptive office of divine light. The redemptive office of divine light. All right, that's why they call emissaries, angelic emissaries, because they're working to redeem man in the flesh. All right, and let's get another precept. Let's go to the second coming of Christ, the resurrection of the Christ within you. All right. Let's see from the Hindu side Because if you study Hindu India or Egypt Even though Krishna is the beloved avatar It's understood that he's only One incarnation Of Vishnu All right, Who was also an avatar And even if you study Kemet Asa or Osiris he was, the, he was the man But at the same time the whole system wasn't built around Osiris or Osiris. All right, it was others also that reigned on high. All right, but in the West over here, we didn't got locked in the idolatry to Jesus because to the Gentiles, Jesus is God. He is the Most High, and there's nothing before Him and nothing after. Jesus is everything and the only thing. To the Gentiles. And since they translated all our scriptures, it's, it's a lot of idolatry. 
in our scriptures. And that's something that I, I, with the books of remembrance, there's a whole lot of idolatry in them. And I ain't got, I ain't knocking the books. There's good teachers in the books, but it's a whole lot of idolatry in the books of remembrance. And that's because the Latter day Saints put it together. Even in the sealed portion, the man come in the sealed portion and tell you it's many Christ and it was many fathers and it was many saviors. But at the same time, idolatry to Jesus runs all through the books. All right? But let's go to page 17. All right, I'm going to start with the side note. It says, Only begotten Son refers not to Jesus' body or his fleshly person, but to his Christ consciousness. Yahshua, or Jesus himself, makes such distinction when speaking of his body as the Son of Man. And of his soul, which was not circumscribed by the body, but was one with the only begotten Christ consciousness in all specks of vibration as the Son of God. Now let's go down. And this is going to be what's in John, the book of John right here. St. John said, as many as receive him. To them gave he power to become the sons of God. The plural number in sons of God shows from the teachings he received from Jesus that not the body of Jesus, but his state of Christ consciousness was the only begotten son. And that all those who could clarify their consciousness and receive or in an unobstructed way reflect the power of God could become the sons of God. They could be one with the only begotten reflection of the Godhead in all matter or in flesh, as was Yahshua, all right, as was Krishna, because it was called Krishna consciousness also, as was the son of Asa or Osiris, who was Haru. It was also books that call it Haru consciousness. And through the Son, Christ consciousness, that high level of consciousness, ascend to the Godhead, ascend to the Father, the supreme cosmic consciousness. All right. So it's just, remember, there's a difference between. The Christ and Jesus. Alright. And then let's get another precept to show. Oh, hold on. Let's, let's go. To, let's keep going first. And I will have you remember from the beginning of this cycle that the Lord God ordained angelic emissaries who are in accord with the redemptive office of light to teach these things to the planets, to love the Father and to love one's fellow spirit and all kingdoms of creation. These angelic emissaries were ordained after the order of his son. All right, and once again, let's see, this is not referring to Jesus. The order... The present, the priesthood order of the Son of God, it didn't start with Jesus. It started with Adam. And then it went to Abel. And when Abel was killed, it went to Seth. All right, so let's go to the sealed book of Mormon. The sealed book of Mormon. You can't order it no more. But you can order, you can't get the PDF offline and just print it out which is what I did but also one of our brothers created this and I um I got I'm gonna put the link up for it it's called the seal book of Ephraim which is the same thing it's just worded a little different all right but seal book of Mormon chapter 3 verse 81 and when he was still a young man God showed himself to Seth 
All right, and when it's speaking on God, it's speaking on one of these emissaries. All right, it was an angel that showed itself in him. All right, possibly Metatron, because Metatron is all the books that talk about he showed himself to different ones, and that's the whole thing. When you read these books and it's talking about all these people that seen God and everything, they're like the books of remembrance. A, a lot of them, they say they seen they seen the Messiah, but when you keep studying. It was, it was different angels that they ran into. It's many, 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 many angels, all right, that are working to do the same thing, all right? But the Gentiles put a lot of that, they, they'll entertain it and make it Jesus in a lot of places, all right? Because they don't operate with that hierarchy where it's so many different angels that work with us. All right, but let's keep going. And when he was still a young man, God showed himself to self. And remember, God is symbolic of the Godhead. We got to come out of thinking that God is just some one man like the Gentiles. No, it's a Godhead. And it's a lesson we did on the emissaries of light coming out of Key 303, showing all of the different orders that's in there. He showed himself to self and commissioned him. And self gladly accepted his call to preach repentance among his brethren. It was therefore at the age of 69 that self was ordained to the priesthood by his father Adam. When it was then proposed to establish among his descendants the order of this priesthood of the Son of God. Having for his basis all directives which were revealed from heaven. All right. And that's why I said in verse 2 of Key 303, these angelic emissaries were ordained after the order of his son. All right. Speaking on this priesthood order right here, meaning they are mysteries and it's the same. All right. They was the ones that was revealing the directives from on high to the priesthood in the flesh. All right. The angelic emissaries was the God that showed themselves to self, along with the others that you will read about in this in this book, in the own um, sealed book of Mormon. All right. And the sons of men, knowing that this was the standard proposed by the angelic forces from the beginning. That the presidency of the high priesthood should be handed down from father to son or to a righteous descendant of the promised seed. All right, let's go to verse 82. Therefore, the priesthood presidency of the son of God belongs rightfully to the literal descendants of the chosen seed to whom the covenant promises have been and will be made. And this same this same order that has always existed will exist unto the end of the world. Therefore, Adam, the president of the high priesthood in his day, spread the gospel with self and came to confer priesthood on Enos, son of self, when he was 134 years old. All right, so that's just showing how all right, the order, the priesthood order of the Son of God is not referring to Jesus. It's referring to the order that was set in the beginning, all right, on whom the angelic forces was working with. Oh, uh, and this is, let's go back to verse one. And we'll go on down from there. Because this is the the um the order that was set at the beginning that is referring to. Verse 1. And I will have you remember from the beginning of this cycle that the Lord God ordained angelic emissaries who are in accord with the office of his son or the office, office of the redemptive light. To teach these things to the planets. To love the Father and to love one's fellow spirit and all kingdoms of creation. 
These angelic emissaries were ordained after the order of his son in a manner that thereby the people might know and what manner to look forward to his son for redemption and migration to the next program of creation. All right. Because the priesthood order of the son of God was working with the emissaries of light. He was working with those on high. All right. He was working with the Godhead. And that's why I said that the people might know in what manner to look forward to his son for redemption and migration to the next program of creation. The energy codes held within the hands of the emissaries who interpenetrate the universes are the keys of love-powered radiations. All right. Let's get the definition of the order of Enoch. Because Enoch was also considered the son of God. The order of Enoch. The order of Enoch initiates the faithful into new worlds of consciousness. The order of Enoch initiates the faithful into new worlds of consciousness. All right. That's the same thing that the office of the Christ in the order of the son do. All right, the same thing as the order of Melchizedek. It initiate the faithful into new orders of consciousness, higher levels of consciousness. All right. The energy codes held within the hands of the emissaries who interpenetrate the universes are the keys of love powered radiations which sustain the father's thought forms as they intercommunicate between his living universes verse 6 the emissaries give the codes to the meek and righteous of the earth they give the love powered radiations which are the keys to the kingdom the emissaries give the codes to the meek and righteous of the earth who will plant their codes by compassion and love-powered radiations. It is through the love-powered radiations, the love-powered frequency, that the seed can manifest not only here, but in the other worlds in cycles of the eternal inheritance. All right? And like I said, they get a, they get a code. This is why Jesus kept saying, the humble and meek shall inherit the earth. All right? Because the humble and meek are going to receive the codes from on high. As they continue to search, seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and doors shall be open. But the proud and haughty can knock all they want to. The doors are going to remain closed. You got to humble yourself. All right? The proud cannot receive the keys to the kingdom. All right? The most high not going to let us become like Nebuchadnezzar. All right? All powerful and proud and full of vanity. Nah. It is through the love power frequency that the seed can manifest not only here, but in the other worlds and cycles of the eternal inheritance. Because remember, like we've seen in the, in the superscripts, we got to return back to the similitude, the image and similitude of the Elohim. Because the Elohim is the God that created man. Man was made in the image of the Elohim. The Elohim got the ability to come down in the ability to go back up. All right? Just like the Benai Elohim. They got the ability to transform into uh, beings that look like us, but they also got the ability to navigate the celestial realm. The divine seed 
even expressed as man has been created to exist as a dynamic life force to experience the many levels of universal godhood within the father's plan hence it is through the multiplicity of the divine seed within the father's plan that creation can evolve to experience levels of Allahistic divinity and co-reign with the Lord's alike. In essence, this divine seed is the thought form pattern used by spiritual intelligence to evolve a given soul progression of consciousness out of the infinite possibilities available. Again, in essence, this divine seed is the thought form pattern used by spiritual intelligence to evolve a given soul progression of consciousness out of the infinite possibilities available. And thus, the emissaries have been called to this holy calling to evolve the soul embodiments. All right, and that's why I said in verse one, they in accord with the office of the Christ, which is the office of redemptive life, because they trying to redeem their brothers and sisters on the other side of the veil. And thus, the emissaries have been called to this holy calling to evolve the soul embodiments, the souls that are incarnated, to greater levels of experience. They have been called on account of their faith active in love while others could not discharge the divine seed from the limitations of the body and mind until it had finished this complete cycle of planetary experience all right now let's now let's go back to the superscripts the fourth light picture superscript Thou shall be the kingdom. All right, so we just read about the hierarchy in the kingdom. That's the image and likeness we have to be in alignment with for us to be the emissaries in the flesh. Because remember in another lesson where we showed where the emissaries of light got emissaries in the flesh that they work with. That's what it was talking about when it was saying they was in accord with the office of the sun. All right? It's a duality. You got ones working on that side, working with the ones of us that's receptive on this side to get the work done. In the same way as many attributes in the emissaries is many attributes of the body on this side. But they all go hand in hand. All right. So let's go start at verse 72. Of course, it is not that I am working for the kingdom, but of knowing that I am part of the field of energy that brings about evolutionary transformation. That's what that whole, that's what all them precepts we just read out the keys was about. All right, the power of evolutionary trans transformation. That's something that all love. It is not that we are working for the kingdom, but a knowing that we are part of the field of energy that brings about evolutionary transformation by being the light and working in the light. Also, since ours is a dualistic system, it is up to each one of us to keep negative energy at bay. Each of us has a subtle assignment. Each of us has a subtle assignment within the light, which is to help all life reconnect to the divine, which can bring about less soul suffering. If we release our desires, seek to heal the separation and reconnect back to the divine spirit, ultimately, our life can be experienced as a precious movement. But above all, we need to show patience 
in one moment in alignment with the light of lights, we see more clearly how to stop the separation and come closer to the divine. Verse 88. So is not everything from the living Godhead ultimately good? So is not everything from the living God ultimately good? In Genesis, didn't he say all that I created was good? As life emanates into new thought form life reality zones, there unfold affinities with God that connect with the spirit of truth. These received emanations, however, can be misconceived by self and associated with self-will. These received emanations, however, can be misconceived by the ego and associated with self-will. Goodness is not what is good for me, but it is the collective goodness. Goodness is not what is good for me, but it is the collective goodness which is understood by knowing that there is a family of light in the heavens and that we are never alone. This is also at the heart of all the fruits of the Spirit. Goodness is the indwelling power of truth with love and kindness being made manifest for the collective. It comes also as part of the higher guidance with faith that is also always present. 92. So just as with love, there is always goodness that is present within every child of creation. But many prefer a self-willed or ego-willed power as goodness is collective rather than individual. So the self-will is the whole I'm going to do me. I got mine, you go get yours. But that's not the way that the Godhead intended it to be. Because when you read about the city of Enoch, they had everything in common. Just like you talk about in the books of Acts. All of the righteous shall have all things in common. That way, there's no poor among you. But there's no rich either. But everybody is good. Many prefer a self-will or egotistical willed power as goodness is collective but goodness is collective rather than individual so without the overview of life from the divine aspect goodness does not make sense to many individuals however goodness as in all fruits is the sharing with others is to shine with others unconditionally so that all are made to feel the positive regeneration of life. It is the higher path and finding our God-like nature. 114. The gifts of the kingdom are the living gifts of the spirit that define the experience of a spiritual life that is eternal. That is, those who use the fruits and gifts of the Holy Spirit Shekinah will inherit the eternal aspects of the Most High's kingdom through the blessings of life as the kingdom in its true essence is composed of thought forms. The kingdom in its true essence, is composed of thought forms of the divine spirit. No fallen thought forms. That's why the fallen angels, the fallen watchers, cannot come back. All right? Because it got to be thought forms of the divine spirit, not the fallen. The fruits and the gifts of the spirit begin our interest into the awareness of the kingdom. 
and not just the local experimental realms we are currently living in. But the fuller kingdom opens through the paths of consciousness. The fuller kingdom that Elijah, Moses, Yahshua, Krishna, and all of those were in attunement with opens through the paths of consciousness that lead us to the angelic realms, merging them together to join in our work with the Christed nature of life, the high consciousness nature of life. And so to define the kingdom, we need to acknowledge the many father universes and then our presence in one of the many sun universes. And finally, recognize that we are currently aware of only a sub kingdom within an experimental realm within the sun universe. Again, we have to recognize that we are currently aware of only a sub kingdom. All right, all we are aware of is this land kingdom that we see. We blind to the marine kingdom. We blind to the kingdom that's within the inner part of the earth. The only thing we are aware of is one aspect of the sub kingdom within an experimental realm within the sun universe which is within the greater kingdom of higher light and life. And we are to become like the angels and be more free to live throughout the kingdom. We must learn while we are here to live by the spirit of love and truth. Grasping a part of the higher similitude. Love, wisdom, and light consciousness are the hidden keys. Love, wisdom, and light, high light Christ consciousness are the hidden keys to opening the gateways of light for us throughout the kingdom. 126. As key for two reveals, our Adamic seed, key for two is the second light picture superscript. Our Adamic seed is not limited to this manifestation on earth, but originates from the higher heavenly realms. All right, and we did lessons on that out the keys. Um, one that we were talking about, Orion. How the Adamic seed didn't origin. We not the earthborn seed. We were sent here. As key for two also reveals. Our Adamic seed is not limited to this manifestation on earth, but originates from the higher heavenly realms. According to El Shaddai, the original commandment of the kingdom includes the preservation and honor of all aspects of the Adamic seed that comes through the interconnecting realms of the sun universes. Metatron, as an extension of the Divine Father, all right, and Metatron is the El Shaddai right here that is speaking of. Metatron, as an extension of the Divine Father, all right, Metatron, one of the angels that I was speaking on earlier that was sent throughout Genesis and other books of scriptures to, to different people. Metatron, as an extension of the Divine Father unites with the Holy Spirit Shekinah to create ongoing life. For this reason, in Genesis 17, Shaddai, or Metatron, appears to Abraham and says his seed will inherit the stars, but his power is far beyond any local seed group. When we work with Metatron, we work with the blessings of the codes of formation and manifestation for all creative life forms. Metatron is the Zaire and Pin, the small image of God, the small image 
a God that coordinates the domains of creation with the central kingdom image that is of the sons of heaven and the advanced hosts of creation connected with Adonai Sabaya. All right, so Metatron is one of the angels that come to work with the righteous seed. 143. Key 303-113 reminds us, thus, in the family of God, it is not the distinguishing level of being of the Elohim, the Hayos HaKadosh, and the 24 elders that is important. Pause. I get the definition. Because in the key that we started in, key 303, it also goes into the Hayos HaKadosh and the 24 elders. But the Hayos HaKadosh, the highest servants of the Ancient of Days, these lords serve the Father's infinite plan of creation by working with his trinitized forms of appearance. They are a non-evolving hierarchy. All right, so next. Let's get the definition of the 24 elders. Let's read about them in the book of Revelation. The 24 elders, also lords. I remember, there's many lords and many gods. Lords who sit in the presence of Yahweh exchanging their commissions in glory periodically with other masters. And remember, we read the definition of Yahweh last time. Don't think about a man in the sky, but let's flip back. yad he -Wah of the living everlasting light, the revealed name to our Father Universe. All right? So it's speaking down yad he the revealed name to our Father Universe of the living light. All right? So now back to the 24 elders. The lords who sit in the presence, the presence of yad he -Wahe, exchanging their commissions and glory periodically with other masters. All right? So they're speaking on in this Father universe that we in Alright They exchange their Commissions and glory Periodically with other Masters They control 24 thrones And dominions Alright remember the lesson we did On the thrones and dominions And how they are hierarchies That set up on the sun universes That's controlled by spiritual entities You got righteous thrones And you got wicked thrones but they control the righteous. They control 24 thrones and dominions which administer the law of central control through councils of light to all universes which recognize Yahweh Wadhi. All right? Because some universes are set up not to follow the law of the light because of the throne and dominions that set up and in the keys, it talk about those are the ones that had the grotesque beings because of their, the way they operate. But let's go back to on um, the super scroll. Thus, in the family of God, it is not the distinguishing level of being of the Elohim, the Hayos HaKadosh, and the 24 elders that is important, but the combination of the Trinity. The combination of the Trinity. The father aspect, the mother aspects. All right? That links the transcendent with the relative. All allowing for infinite interplay between the eternal and changeless aspects of the supreme deity of the father, son, in Holy Spirit Shekinah. All right. And the son is referring to the Elohim. The son also refers to the Hayos HaKadosh. It also refers to the 24 elders. 
It also refers to the emissaries of light, the whole light beings. All right. It also refers to us, the son and daughter that's connected to the light of the father and the presence of the Holy Spirit. All right. It's, it's all type of trinity. But when you see the word son, you got to get out of Hebrew and Christian mode thinking it's always speaking on Jesus. All right. It's, it's going to stop. It's going to cut off your, your, your understanding to a degree. All right. All these are part of the powers. All these are part of the powers behind the kingdom, which established all the emanations originally from the aim so or the limitless night light. Now we can begin to see the powers of the Trinity that composed the kingdom as exemplified. In the Latis, the interconnected network, revealing the many interlinking geometries that are behind the superscript geometry of this key. The many, inter, the many interlinking beings that are behind the superscript mathematics of this key, displaying multiple triangular or trinity patterns of unfolding. All right, it's always a trinity. Everything is connected to the trinity. The things that are not connected to the trinity are not connected to the kingdom, all right, because they broke. In fact, every consciousness time zone and every dimension has multiple trinity arrays, which we can see in our own 3D structure. Where the tetrahedron and pyramidal patterns of life are seen throughout the interlinking geometries, which are linked to both the image patterns as well as the similitude. Thus, within the kingdom, in the management of the father universes and the mother Shekinah universes, creative energies come forth as the trinity of trinities of the infinite way of creation through the eternal sonships and daughterhoods through the eternal sons and daughters of light in sequence of illumination the trinity powers radiate the thought forms the trinity powers radiate the thought forms of the divine mind into the various environments or sun universes. This is where freedom and function enter for the development of the infinite speciesood. The fourth light picture superscript thus reveals how the kingdom houses the divine family and constant flow or continuum in service. From the Hyos Hakadash and the 24 elders to the Paradise Sons, the offspring of the higher consciousness beings come into manifestation within the many universes. The kingdom works on many layers, like we see in the last lesson. The kingdom works on many layers, as it is God's multidimensional family existing throughout the many heavenly realms. And just as the powers of light continue to unfold geometrically within the kingdoms of creation, the life reality zones, so also the paradise deities called sons, speaking on the paradise sons, hold on, let I get the definition of paradise sons while we get. Paradise sons, sons of the ancient of days who exercise spiritual teaching authority over the councils of the Elohim and govern several sun universes collectively. All right, they free to go back and forth through the father universe. Some of the paradise sons region simultaneously as Lord, 
Creator God and Paradise Son as Michael and Christ Jesus. All right. But remember when I told you about the idolatry, they gonna include Jesus in everything. Michael's office was different. But either way, let's keep going. And just as the powers of light continue to unfold geometrically within the kingdoms of creation, so also the paradise deities called sons or benai Elohim extending the sun universes. These are the administrative deities of power who govern what are called the powers and principalities. Principalities and powers are governed by the paradise sons, as well as thrones and dominions, which are an integral part of the kingdoms in the sun universe. Remember the lesson we did on the thrones and dominions and how the benai Elohim got free will to either do Righteousness just like us. They can work with the fallen or they can work with the righteous. All right, but let's get the definition of powers and principalities. Principalities and powers. The worlds of the rulers testing the sons of God. The worlds of the rulers testing the sons of God and different zones of carnality or temporality where sacred realities are shaped to inhabit the worlds of the profane. Where sacred realities are shaped to inhabit the worlds of the profane, the worlds of wickedness. The lower heavens where the gods or lords labor to constitute the archetypes of a succession of eternities into time and space, meaning where they labor to elevate the consciousness of the divine seeds to go farther. Here, the gods and their twin ray or goddess manifestation train the intelligences that have the ability to coexist in spiritual in material worlds. Alright. So that's what the paradise sons do. And like it's that's why I said it ain't much difference between the Elohim, the Hayos Hakadesh, Paradise Sons. They all doing the work of the kingdom, just in different aspects. The same way down here, when you read about in the Bible. The body of Christ, when they talk about the body, it's not talking about the body of Jesus, it's talking about the, the high consciousness, the body of the kingdom in the flesh, the representatives of the redemptive office of light in the flesh, all right? The arm got to be an arm. The elbow got to be an elbow. Everybody got their own position, like we seen. Everybody got their assignment to play in the body. And the angelic emissaries help place us in our position. Alright? But they only do it with the humble and the meek. Because those are the ones spiritually that they can get through to. To work with and elevate. Because they don't overrode their lower nature. And that pride and vanity which comes from the fallen hierarchy is then been demolished within their spirit. Alright? Because they didn't got away from the things of the world that feed that spirit inside of you. All right? Peace.